good. Okay, cool. So I found out when I was messing with my printer that I needed to invert the logic. And basically what this means is that the, the manufacturer of these decided to mix or switch the positive and negative for whatever reason. Uh, I could go ahead and switch these lines, like I said before, uh, to invert the logic. Um, but what I would rather do is just go ahead and go into firmware and right here you can see the in stop inverting basically you change this I change this from this from false to true and then all I have to do is re-upload my firmware and it'll basically give me that functionality without having to rewire the thing so it's wired correctly as per the directions um, but like I said it wasn't working oh and here's a problem that you're probably going to have this uh, receive message. If you're using Pronerface and you're still connected and you try to upload firmware, it's not going to work, and you're going to have a problem, and you're going to have to reboot. You have to reboot your whole system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it off, unplug it, and you have to do this with a Rambo. I don't know why you do. So turn it back on, and since I'm not connected to Pronerface anymore. I'll be able to upload my firmware. Um, and it'll give you various degrees of errors, like whatever it wants to pull out, that's what's wrong. But basically, you just need to reboot your computer, reboot your uh, system, and it works. Just like Windows. So, okay, we'll upload the firmware, and that's going to go ahead and change our install behavior to where it's uh, normally closed, um, which is the way we have it wired up right now. So go ahead and connect and the way you you can check without having all your motors hooked up which way you need to hook them up because uh, basically um, I'll show you how to figure out where your coils are but I've got this wired up right now so I'll do that in just a second so um, to check that your your motors are turning in the right direction simply home it and it'll begin spinning and it's going to freak out at a certain point because you haven't hit the uh, end stop and it has defined maximum travel values so once it's traveled that far it's like well I haven't gone home so I've probably destroyed myself I should stop uh, and that's that's one of the functionalities that's built into it but if you home it you press the button it will stop and this is the functionality that you're supposed to have with this firmware uh, so that's what happens when you go home so if it's spinning the correct direction you're good to go Otherwise, all you have to do is simply turn these around. And now, to figure out which wires to even use in the first place, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to figure out which coils are which. And when you're unplugging stuff, you should probably turn off your hardware. Uh, it's a good idea. You cross paths with the wires, you might be screwed, you might burn your board up. And that's not good. Uh, <coughs> so, when you get these, they're going to come with probably six wires. And a lot of times they won't have the right wire selected for you. And basically, what you need to know with these types of steppers, uh, these are NEMA 17s, so it's pretty standard across all NEMA 17s that it's going to have this sort of configuration. Now, if you're lucky enough to have the four wires broken out that you need, good on you, but um, a lot of times you'll have this six wire configuration. And what you want to do is there's coils, there's two coils, and there's two end taps, and there's a center tap. And you've got two separate resistance values. Now, if you go all the way from here to here, you're going to have a very high, res uh, the highest resistance value. If you go from here to here, you're going to have half of your highest resistance value. So basically, we're going to check the resistance of these coils in order to figure out which, three, which of the wires are connected to which coil, and which wires are the end posts for our coils. So, what I've got do, done uh, is I've got these these cheap Radio Shack wire leads, and what you need to do is get your multimeter and you go ahead and set it on your lowest setting for continuity. And this is going to give you a resistance value. So what you do is connect your leads to one side and connect it to any other wire. Okay. And if you don't get a resistance value, that means that these aren't on the same coil. So these aren't connected. These are not on the same coil. So we're going to move to another wire. Oh, look there. We've got a resistance value. And it looks like it's 3. Right around 3. 
Okay, so we'll keep that in mind and move on to the next wire. Okay, it looks like that wire is not connected either. So, we had our one value that was 3, if I can find it again. Alright, so we've got one value at 3, and we'll keep going through, and there's going to be three wires that are connected to this coil. That one's not connected. We have our last one. And as you can see, we've got another resistance value of 3. Well, what does this mean? Well, since our values, we've checked three of these, and uh, we've come up with two values that are 3, and we didn't have any differences in values. Well, that, what that means is that we need to check the other two wires against each other. So, what we're going to do is go ahead and check your last two wires that you had against each other. And you should get a difference of resistance value. And this is going to tell you which coil you need to use to use the full coil. So, if I can plug them into the right ones, dang it. What you're going to get is a different resistance value. As you can see, this is a higher resistance value. So what this means is that this is, these are the two poles of the coil. These, this is the full coil. So if you wanted to use this coil and make sure that you were using the full coil instead of do, using the center tap, then you would use these two values. And when you do this, use the same process to find the three wires that are for the other coil. And you want to find the highest resistance value and use that pair. And you want to use those four wires to run your stepper. Now, if your stepper doesn't run, if it just sort of shakes in place, it means you've got one of these two coils wires mixed up in your wiring. So simply replace that one pair and switch those two wires, and then your, co your stepper motor should turn uh, as directed by the program. If it turns the wrong way and you want to go ahead and rewire it, you can switch the wires around backwards. Or like I showed you before, you can go ahead and set it in the firmware, and then you won't have to rewire it. So that's how you check out your stepper motors and make sure that you're wiring them up correctly. Um, another note, earlier I was trying to see if the, the, uh, the hot end would work. And basically what you're going to see is if you don't have all your thermocouples connected, you're going to have an error that says this, min, tri min temp triggered. So like I said before, we were trying to test the functionality of both the heated, the hot end, and the bed. So I had enabled both of these thermocouples, and I didn't have one plugged in. You have to have both thermocouples plugged in. This is a safety feature that, so if one of your thermocouples gets sheared off, it gives you a low temperature, and if it can't gives you a low temperature and it continues to heat it, it will just heat itself up until it destroys itself. So this is a safety feature. I've actually sheared off one of these thermocouples, and because of that feature, my printer didn't burn up, which is a nice thing. So after you've verified that you, your motors are working and you've checked all your motors, you made sure that your, your uh, end stops are working correctly, you're ready to go ahead and start building your frame. Because you've got your firmware with a, a good starting point to go ahead and, and continue testing and calibration. But you definitely want to make sure that all your hardware works first, and this is the easiest way to do it. So there you go.